Hey, what's up, everybody? Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, our next part where we are going to start making scores, keeping score, and um, starting to make it so that the game only plays once. All right, so this is probably going to be our last, like, group of code here. So let's make this big. When we look at the game, all right, we want to be able to score every time a meteor that's falling down touches our basket. Either one of the lit up LEDs in our basket will like work for scoring. If you consider this, again, our Y's are vertical axis, our X is our horizontal axis. All we really care about is if the X axis of the meteorite is the same as the x-axis in the basket um, and we are going to use the variables that we created our basket x and our meteorite x it's like checking to see if they meet up with one another and if they do we're going to give a score so let's give that a go so again, when we look at the code that we've written so far, on the left right now I have our basket, all right? We have the basket X um, and then the basket X plus one to give us a second pixel. And then when we press buttons, moving our basket left and right. On start, we have a couple variables that we've set up. We're gonna be creating some more variables for this section today. Um, and then here on the right, we have the actual like game itself where we're repeating this 20 times. We see the meteorites fall within this repeat section. Um, and now again, we need to score. So we're gonna create a new variable today to begin with named score. Okay. And at the very beginning or on start of the game, we want to set our score back to zero so that we start fresh. And if you think about this over here, zoom in a little bit, over here, this repeat 20 times is like our 20 rounds, okay? So each round starts at the top here and ends at the bottom and it's going to repeat 20 times. Before we go back to the beginning of our next round, down at the bottom, we want to check if our meteorite X position and our basket X position are the same. If they are at the bottom of this list, then we get a point. If they're not, then we don't get the point, all right? In order to do that, we are going to use an if statement and a little bit of logic. So underneath of logic here, we're going to grab our if true then. So notice I'm putting this underneath of the repeat seven times. It's not inside of that because that's the thing that makes the meteorite fall. Once it's fallen all the way down, this is where we're going to check to see if we should get the score. So if you remember, our basket is two pixels. Our basket is um, basket X and basket X plus one. And we want to score if we hit either of those, okay? So down here, we need what's called an or statement because either basket X can be the right one or basket X plus one can be the right one. So it's either or of those two pieces. What we're gonna say here is we're gonna go into logic and we're gonna grab this or box and we're gonna replace the if true with or. So this, because it's an or and not an and, it can either be that this first option is true or the second option is true to get us into this box down here. So we're gonna again compare the meteorite X value to the basket X value. So zero is equal to zero we're going to put that in the first diamonds okay so make sure you're putting it in the right spot you can duplicate this we're going to put that in the second diamond as well so now we see zero is equal to zero or zero is equal to zero okay now we need to like populate this information so in variables we're going to grab basket x 
we're going to put that in there. So if basket X is equal to meteor X, that means that they're both coming down the same column. Um, and that would mean that like the two lights touch one another. Okay. Then over here, we need, once again, meteor X because we care about the meteor. That's the, the main thing that we're looking at. But then it's like, does it hit basket X plus one, the extra like lit up pixel? So in order to do that in math, again, we're gonna grab the zero plus zero and I'm gonna drop that in that box there, right? So this thing is getting a little wide at this point. Now, variables, we can grab again, basket X plus one. And once again, just to be ultra clear, that's the same as this pixel over here. The second piece of our basket, basket, basket X plus one gives us that second piece. We have basket X plus one is equal to meteor X. So if either basket X is equal to meteor, which is the pixel like on the left, or basket X plus one, which is the pixel on the right of the basket, is equal to meteor X. If either one of those is, is, is equal to the meteor X, then we're gonna get a point. So in variables, we are going to change our score by one. Changing a score by one is adding one to a score. Whatever our score was, we're gonna change it by a positive one every time we go into this if statement. So uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to like show our number, all right? So you could show this in the middle of the game, but I find that it gets a bit using in the middle of the game. So I tend to only show the score at the end of the game, which is not ideal, but the animation takes too long. So again, we're gonna have 20 rounds of our game. And at the end of that game, which is underneath of this repeat 20, we're gonna like show our score. So the first thing we need to do though, is we're going to clear the scroll bit just kind of wipe everything off. And then under basic, we're gonna say show number. So this is gonna pop up on the screen on your micro bit, not on your scroll bit. We're gonna show the number and we're gonna grab the score from your variables and we're gonna drop that in there. So at the end of the round, we're gonna show our score. Now, the last little bug that we need to fix is that since this is in a forever loop, which it has to be in order to run, once it shows its score once, it's gonna go back to the beginning and it's gonna start like another round of 20 pieces. There are 20 like meteorites coming down. So there are some fun things you could do with that. Like you could change what, um, the fall speed is equal to, and you could like add a second level. So you could play around with some different things if you wanted to by like underneath of show number, you could say like um, change fall speed. It was at 200, you could change it to like 150 and make them fall faster and give yourself like another level. Um, you could also even say change fall speed by like negative 50 and then like the first round it would be 200 the second round it would be 150 then 100 then 50 and then zero it would be like over basically um but i'm just gonna like end the game at this point here all right and in order to do that we're going to use another if statement and another variable so we're going to create a variable named game end and we're going to set game end to zero at the start of the match meaning that the game is not over zero means false and binary one means true so it's is not over then in our forever loop we're going to create a if statement and basically this whole repeat 
Okay, not the clear scroll bit and show number. That's gonna go under the if. But the whole repeat 20 times is gonna go inside of our if. Okay, and then I'm gonna drop it back in there, right? So again, I have my if true then, I repeat 20 times and everything that's inside of that goes inside, right? That's the game. That's 20 rounds of the game. And then after the game is over, it's gonna kick us out to clear scroll bit, show number. We also wanna end the game at that point. Oh. End game starts at zero at the beginning of the match. So we're gonna use that, or game end rather. We're gonna use that at the beginning here. So we are going to grab uh, logic, a comparison. And we're gonna say, if the game ends is equal to zero, which it is to begin with, then we can get inside this if statement and play the 20 different rounds. At the end of the game, um, and the rounds in the end of the if statement, we want to change that variable so we don't get in a second time and beyond. So we can come into variables and we can change our end game by one. Okay. Now what has happened is we repeat this 20 times, we play the game, at the end of that 20 times, end game is now equal to one. When we show our number and we go back to the beginning again, it says, hey, if end game is equal to zero, then we can do these things over. But at this point, end game is equal to one. So this is false. So it's just going to continue to like scroll down in the bottom here and keep clearing our scroll a bit and keep showing our score like over and over again to be ahead hit the reset button. Now, again, if you wanted to add multiple levels to the game, Instead of saying like end game is equal to zero, you could say like end game is less than two. And you could have like a couple different rounds or end game is less than three, you could have more rounds, whatever you wanted. Um, and that would allow you to go through multiple times each time you change your end game score, then eventually it would stop the game. So you can like mess around with that if you want. But if we download this now, Okay, so I just played the first round of the game and um, I got a score of 17 out of 20. Again, the reset button is on the back of your micro bit right here. So when you're ready to play like a new round of the game, hit that and then we can go through and try to pick up your meteorites. And again, after 20 rounds, you'll get your score displayed at the top here and you can try and compete with other people. Try messing around with like changing fall speed. You can also change like the width of your actual game if you want by editing some of those parameters. You can add more levels. Like there's a lot more that you can do with this. This is just like a quick little simple game to be able to play with. Um, but you can see that even like a simple game kind of gets pretty um, involved because there's a lot going on in games. But um, give it a try and see what you think about it. All right? Thanks so much.